Hey econ students, this is Jacob Clifford. Now you know the drill, we're gonna cover a free response right now for macroeconomics 2017, question number two. Now this question asks a lot about the money market and about the concepts you learn in macroeconomics unit four. So let's practice this thing right now, go to the College Board website, print out the free response, try it on your own, see if you get it, then I'm gonna go over all the answers and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and I'll jump on it, but here we go, let's do it. Okay, did you do well? I hope so, this is a question it's a standard question in the AP test. You're gonna see this type of question a lot. It starts off by asking you to draw one of the key graphs. Remember, there's five key graphs of macroeconomics, and they're starting off by talking about, uh, this is question number two, uh, in A, draw the money market graph. The money market graph, it looks like the Phillips curve. It's exactly the same shape, but it's different concepts. This is the quantity of money. Up here is the nominal interest rate. For speed purposes, I'm writing this out. I would write it out right, if I was you, but that's the nominal interest rate. We've got a downward sloping money demand, and then of course there's a vertical money supply. Now it's okay if you label this SM, supply of money, money supply, either one. And of course we have to label dot, 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 dot over. This is the nominal interest rate at equilibrium. Boom, that's the graph we're looking for. That'll give you your very first point. And like always, I'll switch over to a red pen to show you where the points are. One point just for drawing the graph. So one point gets you, uh, you get for just drawing the graph. Now remember when we're talking about money and the demand for money, we're talking about money in cash, but also in people's checking deposit accounts, right? So not your credit card. So in this situation, they're talking about credit cards. That's not money. That's a short-term loan. That's not what we're talking about. So people don't need to hold as much money in their checking accounts because they're using their credit cards. That's what the question says. And so the question is, what happens to supply or demand? Well, remember, supply, the vertical curve, that's all the Fed. The Fed can change the supply. Individuals change the demand. In this case, people demand less money. So you had to have money demand shifting to the left. And let's go ahead and label the new interest rate IR1, boom, that's what you get for the second point right there. One more point for showing that decrease in the demand for money. Okay, now in B, the question continues and it says, based on the interest rate that you identified on the graph. Now in this case, they didn't ask you and you don't get a point for just saying interest rate down, but you should know the graph says the nominal interest rate went down. That's the key information that you got in A. In B, based on that lower interest rate, what's gonna happen to the price of bonds. Now in this question, it's not asking you to explain. So the price of bonds, either gonna increase, decrease, or stay the same. Anytime they ask you what's gonna happen to something, you can say up, down, or same, that's it. When you have to explain, then you have to add in more information. In this case, the price of previously issued bonds is going to increase. That's the right answer, increase. But that's not enough for this video. Obviously, we have to explain why. Now, first thing you need to know is interest rates and bond prices are inversely related. Anytime interest rates fall, bond prices were gonna go, are gonna go up. Now, these are bonds that are previously issued, and there's a reason for this, and it's logical, it makes sense. If the interest rate's really low now, right? Really low, let's say it's 1%. Do you wanna have, if you're, you know, uh, if you're buying bonds and you're trying to get a rate of return, do you want a high rate of return or a low rate of return? Right, so I prefer higher rates of return. I would prefer higher interest rates bonds. So when the interest rates are really low, I don't particularly want a new bond because the interest rates are so low. I want a previously issued bond that gets me a higher rate. And so I'm willing to pay more for those previously issued bonds. If I want to pay more for something, the price is gonna go up. So again, you need to know interest rates, bond prices are inversely related, always. And of course, that'll get you one more point uh, in BI. Now, in B double I, it says, what's gonna happen to the price level and real income and explain? So the price level is going to increase and the income or GDP, I'll just write GDP, is gonna increase. But if you put that, you don't get the point because you gotta explain why, well, because well, a lower interest rate, which we said is gonna happen, lower interest rate is gonna cause investment to go up and consumer spending to go up, right? So all you need to, or you can say aggregate demand's gonna go up. I mean, that's, that's what's gonna happen. So you could draw the graph if you wanted to. You wouldn't get points. You don't have to draw the graph, but you should understand the concept. Lower interest rates means it's cheaper to take out loans, so there's gonna be more investment by businesses. It's cheaper to go get a car and other consumer goods, interest-sensitive you know, interest consumer goods, so consumer spending's gonna go up and aggregate demand's gonna go up. So if you were to explain this, that's the explain part, you're gonna get yourself another point. One point, 
B2. Now in C, they're asking a new concept. They're bringing something completely different. Talk about the velocity of money. Now you need to understand the identity, the idea that money times the velocity of money equals the price times quantity. This is the idea of the quantity theory of money. Now you actually have all the information you need to answer this. Remember the amount of money out there times the velocity of that money, that how many times it's spent and respent, equals the price of goods and services times the quantity of goods and services we're producing. Right now, these numbers numbers together equal the nominal GDP, right? The price of stuff times the quantity of stuff is the nominal GDP. So we already know what happened to the nominal GDP. It went up. We already said aggregate demand went up, GDP went up. We already said that right here. So GDP is going up. If GDP is going up and it told you the money supply is constant, so if M is constant, then what's going to happen to V? Well, V is going to increase. The velocity of money is going to increase and that'll get you one more point in C and it didn't ask you to explain. No explanation required. Awesome. All right. Now, last one. Question D. It asks you, what uh, can the central bank do to reverse the interest rate change we saw up here in uh, A? So interest rates we know are going to go down. That's what the graph says. How can the, uh, the central bank fight that? What can they do to get interest rates to go back up? But they didn't just ask, what can they do? They asked specifically, what open market operation can they use? So that's asking specifically about buying and selling bonds. This is the Fed or the central bank buying and selling bonds. So the Fed can sell bonds. If the central bank sells bonds, right, that will decrease the money supply. So going back to this graph, decrease the money supply could cause interest rates to go back up to where they were before. So shifting the money supply to the left could cause interest rates to go back up. That's what they're looking for. But to get the money supply, to decrease, the central bank would have to sell bonds. So that would be worth another point, which is right there. So add it all up, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Grand total of six points for this very response. Uh, let me know how you did in the comments below. Actually, do me a favor right now, post your actual score. See, so you've got two out of six, three out of six, one out of six. And the reason why is every once in a while, I'll go back in these videos, I'll see what students did and, and how they did, and then it'll tell me if I need to make another video on that concept. For example, if you all get, you know, six out of six, then there's no reason for me to make more videos on this concept. But if you guys get like one out of six or two out of six, I'll make more videos. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you did well. Until next time.